everybody, it is Catherine, the Digital Mama. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the five things I learned about tech from watching Tiger King. All right, so if you haven't heard, Tiger King is this documentary that is out on Netflix. It's very popular, and I finally got around to watching it. And it's it's interesting, for lack of a better word. I mean, so it basically tells the story of a, a true story. It's a documentary of various people that have been involved in the big cat industry. They own big cat zoos or big cat sanctuaries, and it's big cat meaning tigers, lions, um, leopards, cheetahs, things like that. And when I, I'm not going to really get into spoilers or hopefully not. We'll see. So if you haven't seen it, I think this will be okay. Um, and I'm not really trying to get into who did what and who's telling the truth, but really what I want to do is focus on the technology aspect that I got from watching Tiger King. Number one, social media is awesome. Carol Baskin did a really good job at this like years before a lot of people were like from the very beginning she was creating movies and videos and getting involved and especially i mean yeah she was doing posts and things like that on facebook but especially videos this is something that we're now seeing more and more social media experts being like video is so important video is awesome but she was doing this like years and years ago and wasn't concerned like my concern my one of the issues i have is i'm like oh i've got to have like the right equipment and the right lighting and the right mic she was just like i'm just gonna get on there and i have a cause and i'm gonna connect with my audience and she did it really really well and would just show videos of these cats today and what they ate and what they did and we're all really happy and it was fascinating to kind of just watch her just be like i'm gonna connect with these people because that's what i'm doing and that's how she really built her brand which has been was cool to w interesting to watch how she did that when it kind of played out. Number two, back up your data. This is a, mm, whatever. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Maybe this is a spoiler, but there's this shed and it's like an alligator shelter. They have alligators that live in it. And there's just all of these hard drives, like all this information, like files, like digital files, right? On hard drives and it's footage, like video footage from in the documentary, there was like a storyline about how they were making this reality TV show. And this big shed got, um, arsoned. Is that a word? Arsoned. It was lit on fire. And uh, yeah, they lost all of it. So all I could think of was like, oh, uh, like you got to back up your data, right? Although we don't really know who did it. So maybe that was like planned that way, but you got to back up your data. So I'm going to talk really briefly about like the three ways to back up your data. And I'm going to go into a lot more detail in this in future videos. Number one, you can just back it up to an external hard drive. So if you have data on a computer or on a hard drive, just plug it into a computer, get another hard drive, hard drive, put that into a computer and just copy your files over to that hard drive. It doesn't have to be this huge process. Just do it. If you have a computer or a drive that's not being backed up, just go out and buy another hard drive. They're not that expensive, even for one, two terabytes of data and just drag your files over and back it up. Um, number two, another way to back up is what's called a network attached storage. This is a little bit, um, it sounds more technical than I feel like than it really is. All it really means is that when you have a hard drive, think of like an external hard drive or a USB drive, you physically plug it into your computer. But if you have network attached storage, you don't have to physically plug it in. It literally just connects to your network. So to your Wi-Fi. So you just have a box that like sits at your house or sits at your office. You are on the Wi-Fi and you can connect to it and then you just push your file, bring your files over to that box or you back up to that drive, to that box by itself. And now it's like backup, it can be set up to backup everything in your home, which is cool. And it's not like on that specific computer. Number three way to back up your data is the cloud. I mean, like everyone's using it, just do it already. Um, but there's OneDrive, there's Dropbox, there's iCloud, there's Google Drive. And essentially, if you have files on your computer, then you can connect to Dropbox or OneDrive and these different things, and you can back up. Now, not to get into much too much detail here with that, backing up to like OneDrive and Google Drive isn't technically a backup. It's actually more like a file sharing or syncing because anything that you get deleted or changed on your computer might sync up to OneDrive. But it is a backup in the sense if you were to lose your computer or your computer were to be burned and put on catch on fire, those files would still live in the cloud. 
that last part didn't make sense. Don't worry about it. We're going to like the differences between backing up and syncing documents in a different video. All right. One, two, three, right? Yeah. So hard drive, network attached storage, which would be like something that you just connect over the Wi-Fi, or number three, just go to the cloud. They're great. All right. So number third thing I learned from watching Tiger King is how to, how to wipe a hard drive. This isn't really something I learned as much as an interesting thing that I was thinking about. And I'm not going to go into how do you wipe a hard drive right now, but they were like burning computers, like burning hard drives and like just trying to destroy them. And I'm thinking you don't have to like burn, like if you were to take a hammer and like bang on a hard drive, there's a really good chance that most of that data is still there. If you were to try and like burn a computer, th even then there's a good chance that I could get things off of that computer or hard drive, potentially depending on like, how hot the fire got or where it was in the fire pit, whatever. So a better way to do it would actually be using um, software that will go think of you have this hard drive and when you reformat it, a lot of times that that data is still there. You can still get that data off the hard drive. So what you do instead is you use hard like you use a special type of software that will write over the hard drive. Like it'll just write over it a thousand times in a way that the data is really not recoverable at all. Number four, how do you store computers? So they're like storing the entire computer. The only thing you probably really care about is the hard drive itself that's storing your files and storing your data. My recommendation would be if you're getting rid of a computer, open up the computer. If you wanted to keep the hard drive, take out the hard drive and then donate the rest of the computer. I mean, even laptops, you can do that. You can open them up and you can take out the actual hard drive that stores your files. And then they have equipment that you can use to plug your hard drive in later and then just read the data straight off the hard drive without everything else on that computer. You would have like your laptop, you would plug in a hard drive reader and then you could access that hard drive. Hopefully that made sense. The thing I do also is I just give my old computers to my kids. I'll take out the hard drive, give them to my kids and then they open them up, play with them. They get to learn about computers and you don't have to, and then eventually then you can donate them and, and get rid of them in a proper way. Don't just throw computers away. There's a proper way to, to get rid of computers. Number five and probably my favorite is going paperless. So there's a lot of paper in The Lion, in the lion King, Tiger King. And so Carol Baskin, she's got all these filing cabinets. Joe Exotic, he's got all these filing cabinets. They just got paper everywhere, right? And when I look at Carol Baskin, her husband is talking about there's this filing cabinet and this filing cabinet and all these boxes and all this is related to Joe Exotic. And I was thinking like, man, if those, if you ever lost those, that's like hours and years probably of like work that she's dedicated to organizing and collecting this information that she should go paperless. <laughs> and there's a couple ways you can go paperless. She can just buy a scanner and then one by one scan in those papers, which is kind of a slow process and tedious and a pain in the butt. But what I recommend instead is just using your phone. So there's an app called Tiny Scanner and using that, you just take a picture of a document, it turns it into a PDF, and then you can just save that PDF on Google Drive, on OneDrive, on Dropbox, on your computer, whatever it is that you want. And now you have like a scanned copy of your documents and then you can just shred the physical one or keep it whatever, whatever you want to do. So that's like, do so you have like a physical scanner? You can do a tiny scanner app. And then a lot of the programs like Dropbox will do this. Uh, Google drive will do this and OneDrive, I'm sure more where within the app, you can click add and then directly from the app, you can scan a picture in. it'll turn it into a document PDF, or you can save it as an image and you just put it directly into Google drive or directly up to OneDrive. Again, I'll cover that in a later video. Just something to kind of think about that you don't need to have these filing cabinets and filing cabinets. You can just convert over to digital. Anyway, those are my five things. This is probably way over thought compared to like most people when they're watching shows like the Tiger King, but uh, it was fun for me. And I love kind of looking at the different ways people use their tech. If you have any questions, as always, please comment below. Or if you have any general tech questions, comment below. I'm always looking for ideas on what to make videos about. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do weekly videos on helping you understand technology in everyday life in a way that you actually understand. Uh, feel free to reach out to me and check me out at thedigitalmama.com.